4.46 p.m. This was dropped right after I dropped my previous video on this same target. CFA's clearance. This is a big deal for Lordstown Motors. Okay. Um, they're under their asset purchase agreement with Foxconn. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The United States cleared the deal. So that means there is no legal impediment to this, to Foxconn purchasing this plant. Um, Han Hai, again, we had the previous blurb about a Han Hai making a big investment as well. Uh, anyway, the point is, Lordstown said it expects more updates regarding the agreement as part of its earnings result on May 9th. So, as I said, Hightower on the 24th of this month, the last statement from him was, there is no agreement, there is no prospect of an agreement, there are no details on any agreement, there is no agreement. Uh, according to the A asset uh, purchase, uh, the AIP, uh, uh, the, the agreement to have the agreement, uh, there were two basic tenants that had to be met uh, according to the outline of that agreement. One tenant was Cephas approval, which we have. And that was a big hurdle. I was uh, slightly concerned. I was concerned about it uh, as per the previous video. Uh, video, I'm sorry. Now, as far as the next hurdle, according to the AIP, and this, the details of this are going to be hammered into the asset purchase agreement, which is the APA, which uh, more updates May 9th, okay? So there was basically a right hand and a left hand to this uh, AIP agreement in principle. Cephas was a key role, dotting the... Uh, uh, you know, there's some regular closing requirements which are legal mumbo jumbo. The other half of this was the agreement to have Foxconn manufacture the Lordstown Endurance. And um, now there are no details on this. As I said, the high top van is ready to go. The line can make both vehicles at the same time. They have the frame production uh, there to make the vehicles, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is obviously what they are working on right now. And they need to come to an agreement on the production of the Lordstown Endurance. Uh, and this is going to involve... In my opinion, we have no details on this. Uh, international distribution rights as well as the domestic uh, distribution rights. Um, the branding, I, I suspect it's going to be a Foxconn brand internationally. Domestically, it's going to be the Endurance brand. Um, I believe there are going to be two models that are being discussed, one being the pickup. One being uh, the high top delivery van. Uh, Schmidt, the former president of Lordstown, did a great job setting up this line. He was ready to do production, and he said that that line could meet first year production, no problem. Uh, car, a vehicle every seven minutes to start and after the entire production line was rolling a vehicle every four minutes. Of course, they have to get the hub motor line up, uh, and they're planning for a 500 uh, vehicle distribution this year. Both the CEO of Foxconn and uh, DJ Dan at Lordstown have basically put it put, through a line on the ground, drew a line in the sand that this will go into production 
Q3 this year. Now, what is the holdup? The holdup is hammering out the details on this agreement. And the way this works, in my opinion, you guys can read the uh, agreements yourself. They are on the Lordstown site with the SEC filings and so forth. Uh, but the basic tenet here is Lordstown is going to use their engineering and design staff to design additional vehicles for Foxtron. The fees from those design efforts are going to go into the contract manufacturing fees and bill of material fees for the endurance. And initially, I imagine the endurance is going to be distributed in the United States. But the other half of this agreement is figuring out the international distribution, in my opinion, of the endurance, uh, what the branding of that will be. And in this case, Foxconn, I believe, according to the blurbs, is going to have the right to distribute this internationally. Now, part of that is going to be them paying some type of premium per unit or whatever they decide on doing uh, that is sold to Lordstown Motors. So uh, there's a lot of complexity here. Um, there is a lot to negotiate. There's international factors to negotiate. This is undoubtedly a very complex negotiation. Um, I think I have gone through in the rest of this video, I think I've made a case that, man, there are, uh, this, this has to get done. I mean, there are just, uh, there is such a demand for these exact vehicles. Steve Burns was right on the money on his first two efforts. Uh, there's, there's unmet demand for both of these vehicles. There's uh, ineptness and complexity to the other designs that are being offered for these two vehicles. The manufacturing ability and the drivetrain and the engineering of the Lordstown vehicles are superior to the offerings from Ford and Rivian and Bright Drop at GM, in my opinion. And um, anyway, uh, th this is uh, the Gordian knot that they're trying to untie. And I am sure uh, that uh, there are intense negotiations going on uh, to figure this out. And um, this is a new way of making vehicles. This is a new way of distributing vehicles. These are new vehicles. This is a new propulsion unit. This is a new production line. Uh, all these concepts are new. This is the new new. This is going to be the new way to make vehicles. Um, we can see Lucid is failing miserably about doing their own manufacturing and they do not have the connections for the supply lines rivian absolutely not up to snuff losing money stock price down do not have the supply chain and logistics uh to make their vehicles Bright Drop, which is one gm there's there's a number of gm efforts for the delivery vans uh i don't know where they are but you know gm also with the silverado i don't think we can expect any kind of mass production from general motors till next year perhaps late next year and i do not believe they're silverado and i will go through the competitors to the uh endurance here in, later in this video as well uh I don't think they're up to snuff against the endurance. Uh, and I believe that the uh, Lordstown high top van uh, has been thought out to be manufacturable and it's got a lower part count. I mean, it's just, I believe, a superior product. And I think both these, the, the, the timing, these products are meeting the, the market at a time where the other manufacturers 
cannot produce enough to meet demand. And I'm going to go through this in the rest of this video as well. So they're going to be stepping in. Lordstown and Foxconn are going to be stepping into a market with optimal products at a time when the competitors cannot meet demand. And I think the key here is going to be the Foxconn supply chain. I've made prior videos about rumors about battery manufacturers being could possibly be involved with Lordstown. I think uh, there is something there. Um, the amounts of improvements that have gone into the Lordstown line during this period uh, uh, last six months or three months uh, have been massive according to the shipping container data. Um, I believe they're gearing up their hub motor manufacturing. Um, are they playing possum? Do they already have this negotiated? And uh, are they just keeping it under wraps until they are absolutely ready to start production? Is it that they do not want to make an announcement until they can absolutely roll vehicles off the line? Um, is this uh, something that they want to do to kowtow to the SEC and the DOJ? Um, I don't know. There was a visit by Foxconn officials to the plant area. I... In my opinion, now, there have been other videos from other video creators on YouTube about uh, this plant reverting uh, to Foxconn in the event that this agreement cannot be rate, uh, met. Um, I, you know, there is so much money to be made. There is so much money on the table right now. Um, in my opinion, not a financial advisor, not an engineer, not a lawyer, I cannot see how they cannot do this agreement. And, um, I do not, I, you know, I do believe that both parties are negotiating in good faith. Uh, are they sandbagging us? Do they have an agreement? I don't think so. Uh, are they waiting till they can actually go into production? I mean, this is one tangent that you could look at, one vector you could take on this, that they are, in fact, holding back on everything till they can absolutely start production so that they have absolutely no problems with the SEC and the DOJ. That, to me, would be uh, something that Foxconn might be insisting on. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I'm sure DJ Dan is in there. Dan Niavaji, the CEO of Lordstown, and he is negotiating hard. I do believe uh, the recent announcements by the other OEMs have given Lordstown even more leverage uh, in this agreement where they might have been at the disadvantage, I think, uh, because the demand for these vehicles is so strong and absolutely not being met by any of the other manufacturers. Uh, I I think the impetus is going to be uh, for both parties to get together and do this deal. I cannot, in my mind, now I can be wrong on this. And again, this is a high-risk investment. Ride stock is a high-risk investment. However, I, I just at this point in time, with what I've known, and after doing this research and seeing what the overall market looks like, I just... I don't know. I, I can't fathom a default on this agreement. I think another tell on this is the fact that they have postponed it. They did not say it was canceled. They did not say it could be. Of course, it's a black box. They're not talking about anything. But they have moved uh, the announcement ahead. So the only issue really we have now is this contract manufacturing and distribution agreement of the Lordstown Design Products by Foxconn. Now, there had been a local report. I just want to put this in there. There had been a local report, and one of the blurbs in that report from a local reporter from the Akron uh, Journal, uh, Akron uh, Public Radio, and you can read that. It, it's in my uh, two, two videos ago on this topic. Uh, one of the blurbs was that 
Foxconn doesn't want to pay for the manufacturing of the Lordstown Endurance. I don't, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean that they do not want to bring uh, Lordstown in for, uh, into the MIH program to design their vehicles? I don't know. Uh, but the point is, with all the, uh, all the tell, telltales are that, the, the, you know, MIH is, the Lordstown's already involved with MIH. I mean, Hightower's presentation, although there was no uh, absolutes mentioned, uh, the implication was that, uh, you know, it was involved. Anyway, I'm getting a bit long-winded here. I do believe that at this point, and even since this negotiation was announced, I mean, the market, the macro market has changed so much with the Ukraine issues, with the oil market, with the demand for electric vehicles, with the demand for uh, fleet vehicles, with the demand for electric pickup trucks, with the competitors, you know, basically falling apart. There is a giant pile of money on the table waiting to get scooped up. And let me put it to you this way. If, the, if these two parties don't get together, man, it's going to be a mistake. But who knows? Maybe DJ Danny's got another card to play in his back pocket. But I have a skinny bull case on ride. I think this is the new new. And I think this is just the start of this uh, collaboration. And I think it's going to be very powerful uh with the resources of Foxconn and the talent of uh Lordstown Motors and they have proved and they and I you know these endurance trucks have not been out but however the manufacturability the engineering of these trucks you gotta understand Steve Burns was working on an electric pickup truck for 12 years and probably more experienced than any of these other players and he put all that knowledge into this product anyway enough uh Let's move on to the next section of the video. All right, let's just start with the Silverado RST. Available. I got this is in the wrong place. Sorry. This is a grocery getter. There's no cab off function here. This is independent suspension built on a SUV skateboard, not a truck. Available fall 2023. No competition. Uh, this is the Cybertruck. Cybertruck will finally go on sale in 2023. Musk confirmed lecture is now set to go on sale sometime in 2023. Musk didn't specify when. So, uh, I, I think that's a big maybe. So, no Cybertruck, no Silverado till next year. Uh, Rivian doubles pace of production, but 2022 Alba still held back by supply chain ceiling. This is March 10. They've cut their production in half. Chip shortages, battery shortages. I think they're having trouble making these vehicles because they're too complex. The suspension is too complex. The drivetrain is too complex. They just can't assemble them fast enough. They're basically hand building them. I think they've been doing this from the beginning with the Rivian. Again, Rivian, this is April 6. On pace to meet 2500 vehicle production target. That's bogus. It's again, Rivian said supply chain essentially limited the planned production by half from 50 to 25,000 uh trucks. Rivian's normal plan is a production cap capacity of 150,000 vehicles per year. Uh, too complex. Too complex. And we'll eventually expand that to 200,000. I think that, uh, of course, they're ramping up, but again, I believe this truck is too complex. Okay? Ford, post loss, $3.1 billion loss on Rivian. Uh,. They're getting rid of uh, 580 year engineers. A lot of them work in their EV group because the first EV they put out isn't very good. And they have a completely new design for 2025. And 
this tells me that they are not going to, they're going to make this truck and this is going to be the first, last, and only version of this truck, the Lightning. It's going to be the Lightning 2 because this baby, <laughs> this, this bird ain't flying. Okay, Ford stops taking orders for the most affordable F-150 Lightning. Okay, the... F-150 Lightning Pro and XLT. Now, the Lightning Pro is their fleet truck, and the XLT is the consumer version of this fleet truck. These are direct competitors uh, with the Endurance, uh, and I believe this is the Endurance, and this is the Endurance consumer model, the XLT. Um, stop. Stop taking orders. Such high demand sold out okay cannot meet demand okay the buyers who want to do it must upgrade to the more expensive model okay so there are no more ford fleet trucks being ordered being sold this year and in the and the xlt which is the consumer version so again they can't meet demand and they've stopped taking orders Ford shut down the F-150 Lightning reservation system. So before, you could actually order a uh, less expensive model. You can't order anything now. Okay. Ford, re uh, reservation closure and order wave. Is Ford still taking F-150 Lightning? And this is all versions, reservations. No, they are not. They cannot meet demand. Again, this is a cobbled together truck. It is complex and hard to manufacture. Um, and in any case, they can't meet demand. And we're back to the Silverado. And uh, I'll tell you, here's a Silverado. Again, no bed off feature. This is on a car skateboard. This is not a truck. There is no straight axle here. The point I'm trying to make with all of this is the Lordstown Endurance is the only game in town. Not only is it the only one that can ramp up production and meet production, uh, you know, uh, our ex-president of Lordstown, uh, Schmidt, fantastic job. Uh, gearing up that plant for production. Uh, they have been retooling. Obviously, uh, we don't know what they're doing, but they've made it even better. Uh, is uh, our, uh, the Endurance, uh, will they be able to produce? Yes, they. I believe they will be able to produce the Endurance. Are they going to suffer the same battery and chip shortage of these other manufacturers it's foxconn i don't think so um you know right now uh the so the lordstown endurance anybody that wants a fleet a real fleet pickup truck they only have one choice endurance uh consumers that want a 55k affordable real pickup truck that can do work not a grocery getter they only have one choice the uh, endurance um i think this gives uh, lordstown motors great leverage in their negotiations with foxconn and you can see how this foxconn um uh Joint venture is going to work out fantastically. They're going to be able, in my opinion, they're going to be able to ramp up. Well, they they've said 500 vehicles. We we got to understand they are ramping up. However, they are in the the best position, I believe, of any of these manufacturers to take market share, which is exactly the plan of Foxconn. Um. And, uh, you know, there's other vehicles involved as well uh, that uh, Lordstown has on the list, which is, what do they have? They have the delivery van, okay? We're going to try to go through that. 
in the next section. Okay, now we're going to talk about the main competition, uh, one of the main competitors to the Endurance uh, High Top Van, the Lordstown High Top Van. Uh, this is the Rivian Van, which uh, I saw pictures of. It was wavy gravy over here. I mean, the production model I saw looked horrible. Anyway, everything we know about the Rivian uh, Amazon EDV electric van. And again, this looked horrible. Um, don't really like the van look. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is April 1, 2022. Going down here, custom design, blah, 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 blah. This is very interesting. Copying the Endurance. The EDV uses a steel body on a steel ladder frame skateboard. That is the Endurance model. Now, they've got a weight of 9,000 pounds here, I believe. The Endurance pickup truck has that beat by about 2,000 pounds. We will see with the big uh, van body. Now, many people were talking about the range reduction of the Endurance from 250 to 200. Here's your answer. This delivery van has a range of 201 miles. That is what uh, Amazon specified. So we can we can gather from this that um, Lordstown is planning on building the van and the truck at the same time on the same frame with the same range. And evidently someone through a number of studies has determined that this is the optimal amount of travel that a fleet vehicle does during a normal day thought this was all very interesting again a total copy of the endurance architecture and again this matches the range of the endurance again are we looking we were speculating about this in the endurance we don't know if that's true um again they want to increase production to 200,000 vehicles amazon with variants of this van they can't get these out of the door okay um they're making 200 units per week of all the trucks and i don't even think i don't even think they're making that many uh that uh, Rivian Dads or whatever that channel is, these guys are waiting months to get their trucks. There's always been a lot of flim-flam uh, with the delivery uh, numbers from Rivian. And I might add, you know, Ford CEO, he just made another caveat. Well, we don't know how many of the orders are going are gonna to transfer to purchases. You know, this is what they crucified Steve Burns for, for in their short and distort campaign against lordstown um anyway i just thought these were very interesting as you can see the lordstown motors van is going to be a direct competitor and the dies are already made for the body panels on the on the uh lordstown motors uh high top van it's going to have the same rate. I, I, would, I would believe it's going to have the same. I think it's going to beat it on weight. Anyway, Lordstown are started initially with this ladder frame concept. And obviously, Rivian has adopted it because it's the optimum design. But you know what? They can't match uh, the Endurance um, because uh, it's been designed from scratch with this in mind. Um, the Endurance also has the Endurance platform. That plant at Lordstown has a frame shop within it to make these ladder frames. Um, with Again, with Foxconn supplying the uh, batteries and electronics, uh, you know, can Lordstown crank these out? Yes, they can. Are they going to do a better job than Rivian? I think so. Rivian is a mess, as is the Ford unit. Um, they're just, you know, 
they just in Rivian it's the complexity of the vehicle at Ford they're doing a horrible job with their transition they can't even can you imagine the money they're leaving on the table and the money that Rivian is leaving on the table and this is all the money that uh, Lordstown Motors and Foxcons are going to scoop up off the table uh, when they go into mass production of these vehicles. Okay, this is uh, GM's Bright Drop. There's a number of different GM products. Uh, it's very confused and confusing as far as their delivery. This is their Bright Drop van. Uh, the last live view I saw of this at a trade show was a very rough prototype, unfinished vehicle. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Just go through this real quick. Uh, all electric e-transit vans uh, will always be playing the same space as Ford's announced e-transit vans, as well as Rivian Amazon. Well, we know Rivian Amazon isn't going to be any, in any van picture because they can't do anything. Ford can't even make a pickup truck. So all we got left is this GM product. Uh, 250 mile range is impressive. However, combo using GM's ultimate battery and drivetrain technology. So, this is going to be built on a car platform. <laughs> it, it, in my opinion, uh, I think it's curious. They also have a, a pallet mover that goes with this van uh, that they're designing as an accessory. It's got a hub motor, interesting enough. Uh, light commercial vehicle, which is what the uh, uh, endurance high top van is going to be. Now, available at gross weight less than 10,000 pounds. They don't have any figure on the gross weight. And maybe you can help me. I can find no uh, capacity, cargo capacity for this vehicle. So, let's move on here. Uh, December 21... Delivered the first five of 500 electric vehicles to FedEx. I can't find a lot of delivery information on this van. <laughs> I don't think it's in very big production. In any case, uh, it's on a car platform and or would a, a car-like platform, and we don't have any cargo capacity listed on it. 250 mile range, which uh, seems to be more than is needed, according to the other manufacturers. Um, this is a video uh, from uh, Bright Drop. I'm going to play here with the with the sound down. Anyway, this is the introducing GM. a smarter way to move your goods. This is the GM the competition to the front door. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, again, not without a flight, without. Uh, I don't know how they're going to work this with the, the suspension and the weight and the gross Connecting weight of the vehicle. You know, their vehicle classes they they have a, a limited uh, amount of weight they can put on the road during their class, so according to the class of the vehicle and so forth. But the point is. I can find no electric step in van. cargo capacity for this. Oh, Crafted wait a minute. GM's Did you see that? Ultium battery platform. I saw leaf springs. Purpose built from the ground up. And I designed saw for leaf safety springs. And efficiency. So, again, aha. Uh -huh. Did you see that? Now. Ultium battery platform. Purpose built from the ground up. All right. Let's and designed watch this for real close. And efficiency. Looks like, like the workhorse van, which was destroyed by a short and distort. And organized in efficient way. This is the pallet with goods. the hub motors uh, thing on it. The Bright Drop EP1, a fully electric delivery container yeah. designed for ease and security to help reduce shipping risk. 
increased shipping efficiency, and increased shipping content. This is certainly a nice feature, which uh, there it is. You can see Purpose there real briefly. Where was that? I think it's right here. Anyway, I see some leaf springs there. Bright drop EVs. Who knows? Is this a prototype a totally vehicle? See the leaf springs? See it right there? Vehicles. See the leaf springs? Crafted atop GM's Does that have a straight rear platform. axle? Is this front wheel drive? Purpose I do not know what this architecture is. And designed for but driver safety they've and gone efficiency. to the straight rear axle too for a commercial vehicle. We're going to have to see how this works truck, out. Rapid load vehicle anyway, there I can't find any and sales and production numbers on it. This is a nice feature as well. However, I think uh, the people are going to be looking one. for a, uh, a fully electric delivery cheap, uh, designed for ease reliable uh, delivery van as well. Risk. I don't know how well this is going to work in every situation, this uh, gadget here. Unified anyway, um, this is the GM offering. Goods. Again, not a lot of information door. on this uh, sales-wise or what they're doing. Um, anyway, just an idea of what uh, Lordstown Motors is facing. I think their uh, high-top van is going to be very competitive because of the hub motors and because of the uh, manufacturability and other things. But none of these vans, the Rivian or the Bright Drop, are talking about capacity. This is MXUX. So I'm just closing out this video. It is a bit lengthy, but I think it covers some important points on uh, what this joint venture is about. Uh, there's a lot of news here closing in in these last uh, 24, 48 hours on the joint venture agreement. I have another video planned on the investor relations release on the next quarter's earnings report and the joint venture information uh, in that, uh, which I'm going to drop shortly after this video goes out. I hope you guys like the video. I think this video makes a case for this joint venture, and I do uh, think this is a showstopper. Everyone's still negotiating. No one's walked away from the table. Uh, I am hopeful uh, that the uh, joint uh, venture agreement is going to be signed and the joint production uh, design uh, aspect of that is also going to go through. Thanks for watching. See my next video.